Why, well, hello there, friends. Long time no see. Uh, as the title is suggesting, this experimentation has to do with the water you use in making your homemade black powder. Does it make a difference? Well, what I'm going to test is just the burn test to see if we can see if there's any trace elements left behind. In a previous video, I showed you my homemade juniper that was made with groundwater that I thought and suspected at that time was particles that's in my groundwater. And I do have a lot of minerals in my groundwater. So what I've done is I've milled up some gunpowder that's used with city water, uh, Rio Rancho. And then I have some gunpowder that I made with distilled water. And then I have obviously plenty of my homemade gunpowder that's got my groundwater in it. So what I'm gonna do is I've cleaned off three pieces of that I-beam and I'm gonna try to burn about 50 grains if I can get 50 grains of powder on each uh, square piece of metal because I'm thinking the more powder that gets burnt the more evidence might be left behind of some of the contaminants that might be in the water. Now just theorizing on all of this and thinking about the whole entire process of making homemade uh, gunpowder right now I'm of the opinion it really doesn't make a difference just simply because we use so little water in moistening up our powder before we puck them. And if there is excess water during the pucking process, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of that water gets pushed through and it comes out the bottom of the pucking die. So with all of that being said, let me get uh, set up and we'll, we'll do the burns. So here's 50 grains of city water and it should also be noted that all of these gunpowders are also made with the juniper as the charcoal. Give you guys a close up here. I'm going to put a CW on this, signifying city water. As far as I'm concerned, looks looks like it's a pretty clean burn. But I'm going to let these set for a little while and then um, see what happens over time. All right, I'm going to get set up with the next gunpowder. So here's 50 grains the gunpowder made with the distilled water. Alright, there's the piece of metal. After the burn, you decide for yourself at this moment in time. I'm going to put a DW on it for distilled water. So here's the gunpowder made with my groundwater. So there's the piece of metal after the burn. You guys decide for yourselves. I'm going to put a GW on this for groundwater. And uh, maybe just let them set for a week and see, see what they look like in a week's time. But you decide for yourselves. I can tell right here it looks like there's a little bit more particles and stuff left behind. Uh, just looking at it right here. So I'm really beginning to wonder, and not wonder so much, but begin to think that maybe at least my groundwater is leaving some of these minerals behind. So now that I'm here in my shop, 
I now have a tomahawk head that I need to harden and temper. Thanks for watching thus far. Well, the tomahawk head turned out really well. There's one side of it, there's the other side. There's a look of it straight on. Looks good, throws good. Um, once I got it hardened and tempered, I went back and heated it up just a little bit and put some plum brown on it. Just to kind of give it a little bit of color, make it look a little antique. All right, on to the next part. So it's been a full week, and here's the results. This is my groundwater. Now, I've mentioned before on this channel that I know I have a lot of minerals that's in my groundwater because all I got to do is just make it in the ice cubes, let the ice cubes melt, and you can see the floaters in the water. So I'm going to give you guys a really good close-up, I hope, here. And hopefully the camera will focus. That little spot right there, I'm guessing, might be minerals left behind. And there's the GW for groundwater. Now whether that inhibits the function of the gunpowder, well, we'll find out when I get an opportunity to shoot these through my chronograph. So there's my groundwater. Next is the distilled water. So let me give you guys a close up here. Doesn't really look all that different, does it, guys? There's the DW for distilled water. Okay, now let's get the city water. So here's the city water. Let me give you guys a close-up. Well, surprise, surprise, surprise. Can you guys note what I note? City water is actually a lot cleaner. And the city water was from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Okay, I'm going to put all three together and um, give you guys a close-up of all three together. So I have them leaning towards the window to get a little bit more light. I'm going to give you guys another close-up here, side by side. You can decide for yourself. Once again, there's my groundwater. You can see there's a lot of particulates left behind. There's the city water in the middle. And then here's the distilled water right here. Looks to me like the distilled water leaves a little bit more particulates behind than the city water. So for all you guys, <laughs> for all you guys that are flapping your jaws about contaminants in the gunpowder, contaminants in the gunpowder, looks to me like now we're just all talking shit. So again, you guys decide for yourself and of course ultimately shooting these gunpowders through the chronograph will really determine if the water has any adverse effect in the performance of the gunpowder. 
I'm of the mind they actually do not just simply because guys we use so little water when we're pucking our gunpowders and not only that whatever water is in your gunpowder gets you know gets pushed through and out of the bottom of your your pucking die I know it does for me and what I see come out the bottom is is just clear clear water so anyhow uh, stay tuned for the uh, the side by side or the heads up shooting of these three gunpowders and we'll see if the chronograph can distinguish anything different.